They're going to be able to host it for the sixth time. And I wonder well, who will be on that top then. Certainly Bjurgen intends to go all the way. Justina Kowalczyk will not retire with the Olympics just around the corner. It'll be interesting to see if she can start to win the major titles as she does the overall World Cup. And I see the World Cup next year is going to Poland. And that's prior to the, it's the, the last World Cup before the Olympic Games. And I do wonder if all the, the main contenders will take that trip over to Poland or not in their preparation for the Olympics. So the presentation party move on to the stage. You can just see the crystal globes on the left of your picture. Time for the prize giving ceremony for the World Cup final here in Sweden for the men. Priserna kommer att delas ut av Svenska Skitförbundets vice ordförande Jerker Lövgren tillsammans med Internationella Skitförbundets generalsekreterare Sarah Lewis. The prizes and the flowers will be handed over by the vice president of the Swedish Ski Association, Mr. Jerker Lövgren, accompanied by the Secretary General of the FIS, Sarah Lewis. For tredje plats, third place, from Norway, Martin Jonsrud Sundby. Sundby, third yesterday in the classic race, having led all the way. Finishes third again today. He'll be working on his sprint over the summer months. Kroh, who played uh, a very good tactical race today. He started in sixth position, 54 seconds behind, and 10 seconds down on Sunbi, who he beat in the last five meters. Pedro Nortug certainly looks more comfortable when he's on his skis than he does on the top of the podium. But once he gets that check for 41,000 Swiss francs in his hand, he'll be starting to think uh, what he can do with that. He's uh, been very successful out on the tracks, almost 200,000 Swiss francs, his total prize money for this season. And of course that pales into insignificance uh, alongside all the endorsements that he picks up in uh, Norway and uh, further afield. Nortug gets the flowers. I'm just thinking the best of the Swedes today, Patrick. Rickardson, 11th place, and they'll be thinking, how do we de depose the Norwegians in two years' time when the World Championships come here? Well, the 80s and the early 90s were all about Sweden with the Gundersvans and the Torgny Morgrens, Thomas Vasbergs, but uh, the last 15 years or so, the Norwegians have pretty much had it all their own way. A lot of them moving to Oslo now where the facilities are best and the, the company to train with is so outstanding that uh, you can't really do better anywhere in the world. I think the, the boys on the, are all comparing their checks, 41,250 for Nortug, 27,500 for Krog, 13,750 for Sumbi. So the mini tour involving, of course, the sprint in Stockholm this year, followed by the prologue, uh, still fascinated by the prologues, Mike, 3.3 uh, kilometres. Uh, it was supposed to be cut short because of the conditions of the track here for the men. So just going over two and a half kilometres, but just that little bit too long for the sprinters and just that little bit too short for the endurance athletes. It's a real conundrum and very, very few people master it time and time again. Nautic has certainly managed that. Arik Brandstahl, third place in the uh, sprint finals, all the bonus seconds awarded uh, throughout the week. 
Viligjanin. Well, at least something good has come out of the day. That fall at around six and a half kilometers cost him his chance of finishing in the top three today. He dropped from second all the way down to 12th. It really was an expensive mistake, but did look and, tired. And uh, guess who's won this one as well? Peter Nautic. I guess Fisher will be pretty happy with the way things have been going this season, Mike. They've had a, an outstanding season and uh, the same in the World Championships uh, so often, getting their athletes onto the podium. Cost of a racing pair of skis nowadays. You're looking at 450 to 475 euros for the Fishers and the bindings. It's expensive. Thank you very much. And hopefully the next prize will be the overall World Cup for the man that has shown the best form all the way through the season. A lot of the top uh, athletes missed out on the North American part of the tour. I think that's a shame, Mike. Uh, and it's something that they need to look at as we have a look at the women's uh, standings. Justina Kowalczyk, over 2,000 points accrued, finishes ahead of Therese Johaug. Her best ever finish, fourth, third, second for Therese Johaug. Will she be the one who finishes number one next year? She's going to have to develop a sprint if she wants that to be the case. And, of course, uh, a good comeback from uh, Marit Bjorgen as well. Further down, the order, Shikalaba, the best of the Russians, down in 12, 5,500 points, 1,500 points adrift of the World Cup winner. Anna Kaiser Saarinen, who really reached her peak in 2008-2009. The Swedish women's team, of course, they took the silver medal at the World Championships, but I think they've got a lot of rebuilding to do. They need to, they'll be looking obviously again at medals in the relay at the Olympics, but overall this season, I think they'll walk away slightly disappointed. Therese Johaug in the background waiting to uh, receive her award as the number two athlete of the year. So Stara gets sixth place uh, overall, one of uh, a few women who actually got a World Cup win. Heidi Vang again from Norway. This is going to be, uh, it's going to look like a national championships here, I'm afraid, on the podium for the women's events. Vang just 21 years old and certainly a star in the making. Marit Bjurgen, fourth place, but uh, remember, she missed 18 races. She missed over half the season and she still manages to get into fourth place. Nine wins, four seconds, and uh, really an outstanding performance. Keegan Randall started the season in impressive style and gets on the podium. Well, she was the first, uh, North, uh, first uh, American athlete to get top five in the world in the last two seasons. Been up there on, in the third place. What an athlete. Five wins for Keegan Randall this year. Therese Johaug, perhaps the most popular of the uh, Norwegian women on the tour. The darling of Norway. She's had a fantastic career as a skier. I think uh, modeling might be her next option. But the champion for 2013, a woman who did not race today, 
because of uh, health problems. It was a real shame not to have her out there challenging Marit Bjorgen for the win. But Justina Kowalczyk is the champion for 2013. What a year she's had. She didn't have the success that she wanted at the World Championships. She wanted more. And when they were over, the, I know she was asked the question, you must be disappointed. She said, no, it happened. I tried. I move on. And that's what she's so strong. She doesn't dwell on uh, her poor performances. She just looks to the next one and get the next one right. Yeah, she won the overall. She won the Distance World Cup. And, of course, she won the BMW to take home uh, to Poland. Not sure how she's going to manage that. But uh, it, she's gone from strength to strength this year and just fading in the last few uh, races. No, that's not unusual. She uh, generally struggles at the end of the season. And I don't think anyone is capable of being on uh, top form right the way through from the middle of November to the end of March. It's, it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge ask mentally, physically as well. And I do remember some of the early races, Justina came into the season and she was down in 22nd position, which in all her past five years, she very rarely gets outside the top 20. I was concerned initially, but she puts in such hard training on the glacier in October in Ramsau, and then uh, overtrains and then backs off for the races and comes good. Yeah, she really started to show her form when she went to North America.